ACL's got a whole history in the nuclear medicine, starting in the early 50s with the cobalt-60 and cobalt therapy units, as they were called in those days, to actually deliver treatment to patients, progressing through some of these radioisotopes. And the success story goes beyond just the gates of Chalk River, because we've got partners here in Canada who've developed a whole industry around the fact that they had ready access to isotopes. An isotope is an atom, everything's made up of atoms, is an atom where its makeup is slightly different. You've got isotopes in your body. Isotopes are matter. It's just they're, they're slight variations for any given material, aluminum, iron, they, they all have isotopes. When you get into the medical isotopes, they're what you call radioisotopes, and they're not stable. So as a result, you make them and they break down. In that breakdown, they release energy. It's that property that is harnessed for medical imaging. The beauty of the, and the reason Molly 99 is so widely used is because of its very short half-life. Molly 99 becomes technetium 99M, so Molly 99M, technetium 99M, has a half-life of 66 hours. The distribution of Molly is indeed an exercise in logistics. From the time we take the product, the Molly targets out of the reactor, it'll be processed, it'll be shipped, it'll be cross-shipped and trans-shipped to people who are expert in logistics. What the medical community is after is really the TC99, which only has a six-hour half-life. The short life of it and the particular energy bands it reduces, and when it gets to technetium-99, it's not a, a high-energy field. It's just in the right range so that it can do the imaging without doing damage, but it breaks down so quickly, and a half-life of six hours means six hours from now there's only half left in you, and six hours later there's a quarter left, and so on. It goes down the chain. It's like selling ice cube in July. But I start with a nice fat ice cube, I leave it there, it'll be completely gone, I got a little puddle of water. Same thing, if I have an isotopes in the generator, and I don't use that generator, let it sit on the counter for a week in the hospital, when I go to use it, there's nothing left. It starts with highly enriched uranium. We receive that from the US through special agreements and licenses. That material is all tested for quality control and so on, and then we have our own fuel fabrication facilities here at Chalk River. Well, this is a replica of the Molly target. It's essentially made up with two end caps and it's clad in aluminum. Within that is a pencil of highly enriched uranium mixed with an aluminum alloy. Sixteen of these make up a rod which is irradiated in reactor. Those are then pulled from the reactor, placed in the bays, and that's basically a big swimming pool to let it cool down for about 12 hours. The rod is then disassembled and then transferred from the NRU to our Molly production facility. So that's a separate set of hot cells, which are, again, heavily shielded facilities that people work with manipulators through, at which point the targets are stripped, dissolved, and the Molly 99, which is the product that we want to ship, it is extracted, separated out using chemical processes. That, in turn, is what we immediately ship over to MDS Nordion, where they do further purification of the product as well as all of the quality control checks. The molly that ends up being out there in the hospitals from one target uh, represents in excess of 2,000 diagnostic procedures. The quantities quickly get up there. One batch, that's 16, so that's over 30,000. What makes this global distribution network efficient is truly the processing people and the generator manufacturer who have become logistics experts. They can move that product quickly. Fast efficient is what it's all about in the isotopes business where six hours later you have no product left, it must get into the hands of the patients very quickly.